Welcome to another Hangout On Air by Federico Ri, entrepreneurship coach and founder of Creative Entrepreneur. Good evening, and my name is Federico Reeve from Creative Entrepreneur in Melbourne, Australia. Um, good morning and also good afternoon, depending on where you are around the world. The great thing about Google Hangouts is that it does broadcast all around the world using amazing technology. Tonight's theme or Hangout is about game changers and uh, what is your definition of a game changer? And what can we learn from game changers in the industry of business, education, and even entrepreneurship for that matter? So joining me tonight, I have a very special guest, uh, which I'll introduce shortly. Her name is Lisa Shaw, and she's the CEO of Our People, um, a Melbourne-based organisation, uh, which I'm sure Lisa can um, define in more detail very shortly. In a few words, Lisa likes to define herself as a risk taker, uh, also as a pioneer of education and um, entrepreneurship for that matter. Um, she's also a leadership expert. And um, without saying too much more, I'd like to formally introduce Lisa as my guest, special guest tonight. How are you, Lisa? Very well, thank you. Good morning and good afternoon too. You're welcome, absolutely welcome. So thanks for joining me tonight, uh, especially this time of day. Uh, I'm sure you have lots of other amazing things to do at this time of day. Um, I guess I'd like to sort of kickstart um, tonight's uh, show by asking you the fundamental question of what inspired you to um, become the CEO um, founder of, of Our People? That's a very good question. Uh, probably I would say three things. Uh, I came, I grew up in a regional area of Australia um, and my children were also raised in regional areas of Australia and I started my first business in regional areas of Australia and some of the things that I learned in those early years were that one, I was very disappointed in the opportunity and supported opportunity for youth to have a career path and not leave those areas, so go away and get education and then potentially come back. For women uh, in those areas um, to have good career paths in business and powerful and empowered careers in business. And I think the third thing would be my past experiences during my career uh, in business as both an employee and as an executive team member and as uh, my own business owner where culture and business practices were very poor uh, and in particular I found the transactional nature of people in Australia uh, in business to be very poor. So I guess they were the three motivating factors. I believe to be in a position um, to be a game changer, you need to be in a position to be able to make that change. Uh, and to be that, you need to be able to have the ability to be an authentic leader. Uh, and therefore, I, I believe that that was the reason why it was inspired for me to be um, the CEO and also to be the chair of our Academic and Industry Advisory Board, which is just to take that one step further with regard accountability to our um, industry partners. Fantastic. Uh, you have a very diverse and um, dynamic um, career path there. I'm sure you've um, you've ta you've de definitely taken the unconventional path um, instead of just going out and getting a job. So congratulations on that front. Thank um, you. Before we get stuck into um, the definition and and what you know the word game changer means to you, and also between us, how, how do we learn from game changers? I guess just starting out with um, maybe your philosophy to to success. What what is your uh, definition of success and um, you know is, is it something that everyone can pursue in their in their lives or in business? I have quite a different view on success and I wouldn't say it was financial. Um, my definition of a success um, at the top of the list would be respect. Um, to be a respected um, entrepreneur um, would be way at the top of my list. To be somebody who's viewed as a true and authentic leader, um, I believe is also a definition of success. And I think those two combined will naturally bring the successes that you need financially um, and emotionally and educationally uh, that will drive those um, successes. So success for me is about people and relationships. 
Uh, and I think too many businesses go the other way. They set boundaries and parameters on success financially and forget that it's a team of people and a leader that needs to get them there. So my philosophy is, is quite clear. Um, you know, I say quite, quite openly that relationships, openness um, and excellence are the soul of, of my business and I guess they are the soul of what I would say means success to me. Great, that's a, that's a good insight and perspective on the word and if we now shift our attention specifically to the word game changer and we start to sort of deviate from the word success because being a game changer doesn't necessarily warrant or guarantee success. Um, my definition of a game changer is someone who's a pioneer, someone who's a risk taker, someone who's, um, you know, challenging the status quo, you know, the great inventors of the world, you know, the, the pioneers of the past and history and so forth have certainly brought a lot to our to our world. Um, from your point of view, what is your, you know, undertaking or, or, or experience being a game changer? Do you consider yourself a game changer? Most definitely, yes. Uh, I sometimes call myself a bone rattler as well um, because I think to be a game changer, yes, it is about taking risk. However, I also believe it's about calculated risk. So being a game changer, I think, is more about courage and conviction. Um, and I think challenging something that is either not right, something that you don't like doing, and certainly something that has the ability to change an entire sector or an entire industry is something about being a game changer. And in fact, it's, it's, you know, the term game changer, is it a game changer or is it a game creator? Um, so I think in many ways, I actually see myself as a game creator because in my latter part of my career, uh, I one of the things that I did was I actually commenced graduate medicine um, at a very mature age and that was considered to be game changing. But what I actually realised was that it wasn't. I needed to be a game creator and use my experiences um, to make a, make a complete difference. Yes, it is does come with risk but, but a game changer is about, I often use the term, being able to throw the baby out with the bathwater it's not about polishing up something and giving it to back to us in a different colour. It's about new, and I use the word neoteric, and, and people have said to me, you know, in recent months, you know, why have you used the word neoteric? And I said, because it's the actual word that describes true innovation. It means something new, not just something old made new again. So yes, I do believe I am. I've challenged, uh, you know, the absolute foundations of many organisations in that respect, and quite proudly so, and had the courage to do so. That's awesome, that uh, Lisa. It's it's like you're describing the formula to, to success or the formula to being a game changer. And you know, if we think about entrepreneurs or serial entrepreneurs as much as the the great inventors and explorers of the past. Um, there is certainly a trade or a common thread between these people that makes them do what they do. So therefore, um, is it something that the average person can can undertake? So can someone learn to be a game changer? Like, can someone learn to be an entrepreneur? To some extent, I believe you can uh, learn to be entrepreneurial. In fact, my uh, philosophy to that is uh, you're not born an entrepreneur, you become one if you think like one. So what is your, what is your philosophy as far as being a game changer? Is it, is it for anyone? Look, I agree. Uh, I think to be an entrepreneur and a game changer will depend on um, your environment, your uh, ability to think and your opportunity to think. And I think it's also um, a time of your life sometimes where you've been maybe pushed to a certain level and you go, you know what, I can't do this anymore. I'm going to have to do something different. I'm going to go out there and lead the way. But I think uh, it's probably even more than that. I think it's a belief in excellence. I think it's a belief in conviction and, and being tenacious. And I think those are qualities that we can uh, teach people. Let's face it, you know, Sir Richard Branson, didn't, he wasn't born an entrepreneur. Uh, he became one and it was through opportunity and it's through conviction and courage Absolutely. and all of those sorts of things. So 
what I think is often missing, though, when, when we do these, that, you know, we talk about it, you know, you're born that way. Yes, you're born with an ability to possibly think and have four dimensions of thinking, but we can harness that and teach others how to do that most definitely if you give education in the right way and connect the dots the right way. Totally agree with you, mm. Lisa. So yeah. if we you know, turn our attention to our people, your organisation that delivers um, RTO services and, and leadership um, programs and so forth, um, mm. how have you innovated or, 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 or delivered or are delivering a service around that? What what makes you unique and different to what, what is out there as far as competition? Well, that's a very good question because, in fact, there's nothing that's actually similar. Uh, in fact, we have... Every single thing that we've done in our business is has challenged, has been changed. It's from the very core of the way our business operates to the services that we provide are what we would call neoteric. So having worked in the business world and certainly in the vocational education and academic sector for you know, you know, a long number of years, you know, nearly 30 years, that uh, uh, I would actually have said that I've walked away from that sector and then interestingly enough realised um, quite early in the piece, of course, we needed to become, one of the things we needed to become was an, a registered training organisation. However, I don't like to be known as that um, because it is just a tool. We're actually a transformational change and continual improvement and strategy enablement business and capability development business. And we only use being a registered training organisation to do two things, as a tool to enable capability um, within business and of course to manage and reduce risk. So we created a program and a new model of engagement to do business with, with clients called industry-based risk engaged development so that everything we do is about truly managing risk and understanding what that means and I do believe there's a, a great um, difference between what the true understanding about risk is and of course relationships. We don't have relationships with individuals. We have relationships with with whole businesses and industries and whole workforce um, focus. So, so okay. So, sorry, go on. Yeah, no, I was going to say. So we we have connected the disconnect between capability development businesses and industry. We've gone back to who our customer is and turned our focus back to being customer focused and meeting their need, not our need, their need. So it sounds to me that you're being highly competitive, uh, definitely pioneering the industry. How does it attract uh, or how does it appeal or suit the, the average person or is it specific to a certain target market? No, it's interesting actually. We do have um, two very strong focuses that are linked because of high risk and one would be what we would call the independence and care sector which includes things like aged care disability um, any of the healthcare sectors those areas because they are struggling with some huge challenges at the moment and the other sector would be our resource sector heavy heavy construction and manufacturing sector and our you know big sectors like that but in actual fact our programs are designed to be implemented across and a transformation change program designed to be implemented across any business whatsoever and the way that we've done that is to actually harness something that is so core and basic unknown and known with every business which is work health and safety because that's one of my absolute passions it comes down to the respect we should go to work and come home better than when we arrived at work and if we can use something that is so well known, yet so little um, appreciated and so poorly understood, then we have an ability to impact on every industry and every sector. Um, to do that in the way that we've done is compellingly extraordinary. And that was because we looked at our business in the way that we could function and looked at the genuine concerns of our clients, the businesses, respected both, brought them to the table and said, let's manage this, let's eliminate what we can and let's deliver a product to an industry and a service to an industry without it costing them anything. Now that's extraordinary. So to go in and say, look, we're going to do a three-year contract with you and you know what? 
it's actually going to cost you between you know 30 and 50 percent less than what you're paying you're actually not going to spend anything at all they like, look at you and I you know, think well that that's you know too good to be true it's not sure. it's it's true innovation I, I definitely support what you say and I admire your, your efforts in, in pioneering sort of a traditional industry that um, does things in the status quo manner. Um, just before we go further, Lisa, and for the viewers, um, I'm talking to Lisa Short. Uh, she's the founder and CEO of Our People, uh, an RTO delivering services uh, in the leadership um, space, um, a, a business based in Melbourne. And today we're talking about um, game changers. In fact, what can we learn from the game changers? So, so far, Lisa has um, sort of um, announced a few uh, key pointers or perhaps um, the recipe to being a game changer. And just to um, sum up some of those particular terms that she's used, uh, we've got respect, authenticity, uh, leadership, uh, being a people person, uh, relationship focused and, and having a viewpoint of excellence. And very much I share those views myself. As an entrepreneur, to survive, you need to have those qualities. Um, it's also Lisa's viewpoint that you can um, become a game changer if you apply yourself. It's all about stretching yourself. So a fantastic insight, Lisa. So thank you for that so far. Um, I'd like to sort of uh, focus our attention on, on pretty much um, the, the term neoteric and um, you've used that word more than once today. From experience, when you use such a term like that, um, which is certainly unconventional and unique uh, and perhaps not even in the dictionary, and I'll say that because um, maybe I'm a bit ignorant myself. I haven't actually come across that term before. How do you find people react to that word neoteric? Because when I first came across it, I had to kind of um, read it twice. Mm. Uh, it's actually the reaction that we, we specifically wanted. Um, when I, I have a firm belief that I, were, I think the word innovation is done to death. Um, you know, I know it's been a, the flavour of the month that's been bandied around, but I think unfortunately it's become a word that um, is in inappropriately used. The word neoteric takes innovation one step further. The word neoteric really is someone who is a game changer or a game creator, where they don't just utilise something that exists and do continual improvements to it and modify it to meet need. It's reinvent it is completely do something completely new when something's not working and we knew in particular that the vocational education sector has a very poor respect um, quite justly I believe um, we failed industry and that's a very sad place to get to so you can't innovate something that's failed you must completely do something new and that's really what the word neoteric, it implies a complete new entity, a complete new way of doing. So neoteric meaning new. So innovate is not quite what we do. It doesn't quite describe. And I'm very much a words person and a wordsmith. And it's you know one of those things where if I, you know, we quite often use the term, um, we say what we do, we do what we say, and we prove it and neoteric is the right word. It is in the dictionary, it's just, you know, we sort of sit there and, and do word games. But what is good about it is that if I said the word innovate, everybody goes, oh, yeah, well, you know, mm -hmm. if I say neoteric, they sit there and go, mm, what's that? And that's exactly the reaction I want. A game changer needs to be somebody who says, what's that? Not oh well, yeah. you've, said, you've certainly had um, a good reaction from me, hence why you're on my show tonight. So uh, <laughs> it's, 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 done, it's done the right job in that respect. Yeah. Um, so staying focused on on, on, on innovation and neo neo terrorism, if that's a word, perhaps I've, I've yeah. extended that word a bit further. How does yeah. the Australian marketplace, and specifically in your industry, how do they view um, that type of innovation? Is there a limit to how, how much innovation you can actually deploy at any one point in time? Look, yes, I agree there is. I think that, uh, which is part of being part of our strategy, any transformational change program and any introduction of anything new is always a challenge. Um, and the benefit we've been able to have is, and the passion that we've been able to have, which you rarely get in your career, is to actually sit down and create a model that's extraordinary and consider a number of stakeholders. And we've considered our clients, we've in included, uh, you know, government stakeholders like the Australian Skills Qualification Authority, 
uh, you know, large businesses, commercial providers, customers and so forth. And consider the impact on what we're about to propose to them. What is important, and, and this is where um, I guess experience comes in, is that relationships that you build and knowledge that you use during your career. So we've recognised that change is difficult. You need to have some connection with the known to start change, because if you start change with an unknown, which is one of the very strategic region, reasons that we've used something as simple as mandatory work health and safety compliance. Everybody knows first aid, CPR, those sorts of things, they're a common thing. It's not the reason we're in existence, it's the common link we have to what people know. And then we have modified those programs to start to shift things like task-focused education to be thought-focused, introduce dimensions, different dimensions of capability looking at ways that we can identify future leaders, the ways that we, we can bring in our entrepreneurship programs and leadership programs, the way that we can get our regulators to take stand up and take notice. There is a different way. But you do have to take a common element and change the common so they can see what they started with and where they're going. And that makes that change process a little bit easier. But we also need to know that we've implemented programs like our coaching and mentoring programs in everything that we do using real people who've had real experiences, real challenges, real risks uh, and embedding those there. So when people start to feel the emotion of change, we're there to support them. And that's very different than saying to somebody, here's a change program, go to it. Uh, so I think that's, that's a significant difference. Interesting. So if we look at your people, in fact, I'm interested because interested to explore the type of people you would attract or you would want to employ for that matter. So to nurture that um, that innovation or that entrepreneurial culture in your company, what type of people do you ultimately want to work with? Um, I even use the word entrepreneurs. So are they the type of people you're, you're seeking to, to provide those coaching, mentoring, training services? Most definitely. The three directors that uh, own our people are three leading experts in space and they would be not just myself but uh, our Director of Operations and Continual Improvement is, is possibly Australia's leading expert and the most innate person I've ever experienced in that space um, who has an absolute desire to want to help business become sustainable and improved. Uh, L, our third director, is certainly an expert in people and in the care sector. And yes, they are certainly entrepreneurial themselves. But the people that we want to work with are one businesses and we want to take them to the next level. So when we say employ, we don't employ, we engage, we're, we're in a relationship. Certainly the people who deliver our programs and enable our, our continual improvement programs and our leadership programs, they certainly have to be people who have the ability to express our desire as far as innovation, uh, entrepreneurship and leadership. So yes, we won't use textbook people, we will use real people. You know, the likes of uh, programs like Jusur where they have a, um, you know, group, a global, global leadership group of the best leaders in the world, political, um, business-wise, you know, non, not profit, not for profit, uh, all of those, that's what we need and we need to embed that right through down to micro businesses and get them exposure to what potential you can have when you start little with big ideas and you know that's a crucial element um, to what the people we will work for. So we align ourselves only to people who will absolutely be impassioned about the same values that we have. Taking the complex, making it simple and making business sustainable so Australia can be the strongest business country in the world. I totally support and respect your, your relationship and, and, and partnership with Desir and, and, and like uh, organisations that are very much challenging the status quo when it comes to education and uh, leadership and, and entrepreneurship um, and so forth. Um, 
let, let's wrap up shortly. I'd like to just sort of understand how Australia positions itself um, to other developed nations, especially those like um, the US and the UK. As far as um, teaching entrepreneurship um, and leadership, I know there's a lot of stuff out there around the world. Um, where does Australia fit in all that um, complex maze? Look, I think Australia has got a very poor appetite um, for risk. Um, I think certainly Europe, UK uh, and America have a far greater appetite for calculated risk and I think they certainly support startups and people with entrepreneurial ideas to a greater extent and it you know, comes to the, the discussions about what's failure, what's success. Um, you know, with every success you're going to have five failures admittedly but I don't actually see failure as a bad thing because without failure you don't get success either. Uh, I think that Australia is certainly lagging and if we don't pick up our game we are going to continue to lag. Uh, we have the greatest systems and the greatest opportunity for education in the world and yet we're not utilising that to actually harness our ability um, to truly educate people in entrepreneurship. I think women need to be valued a lot more in our Australian uh, economy and certainly in the entrepreneurial approach because I think we've got the attributes that allow us to be so multitasking in those areas. So I think that there needs to be greater education in risk management and what that truly means so that our appetite will be increased in a calculated and safe environment to truly harness what we actually have the capability here to do and to start to export entrepreneurship rather than import it from overseas. Again, I totally support that. We have a lot we can learn from those developed nations, but at the same time, I feel that Australia is pioneering quite a lot. Um, there is a lot of disruption going on in the entrepreneurial space. If there was one thing perhaps that foreign countries can learn from our culture or perhaps from your company per se, what would that single thing be that um, you know we need to be proud about? From us as our people, I think it would be taking two things. It would be taking the complex and turning it to simple and uh, that's always a good opportunity because the more simple you can make it, the easier it is to pass on to people. So I think that's one and I think what we have here in Australia is opportunity. So if I was to say that that would be the thing that I would like to see uh, certainly developing countries take from us is we have the greatest opportunity and that's the thing that we need to be looking towards for our export uh, quality is, uh, is opportunity. And I think that that's something that Australia has a very good framework for, even in the education world, we have a great framework for opportunity. Um, to pathway people into continued learning. I love it. We are the land of opportunity and definitely in the tech space, but even in the educational space, we are catching up. In fact, I, I, I feel very confident that in, in five years to come, we will be one of the leading nations in that, in that area. To wrap up, Lisa, if someone wanted to get hold of you or get, get in touch with you, what would be the easiest and, and most effective way to do that? Look, the most effective way is, again, we're very different in that space in that we don't do marketing. So we don't have a marketing document. We don't have a glossy website in the sense that we'll tell you what we do because it is about relationships. So our website is, is easy and, and it's www.ourpeoplerto.com. Um, we have a fantastic just contact form there. My phone number is, uh, on the, is available on my LinkedIn profile. I'm always very happy to connect with people that way. Um, and to contact us personally because our business is about relationships so it's to talk to us and that's the exact reason we've done that. We don't have the glossies, we don't have any of those sorts of things. Our, our business is truly about an engaged relationship. Um, so pick up the phone, get on the, our website, contact us and we'll be back with you straight away. So I'm very easy to find. That Fantastic and uh, certainly for me it's been very easy to deal with. Um, thank you firstly for your time and for your insight and, and, and words of wisdom. There's a lot that we can learn from someone like yourself who is definitely a game changer and a pioneer in the industry of, of education and leadership. So once again uh, thank you Lisa and um, we'll catch up soon and uh, all the best with your endeavours. My pleasure, thank you very much and, and farewell everyone. You're absolutely welcome, bye bye. For more of Federico's Hangouts on Air, please visit www.creativeentrepreneur.com.au.